acquisition. My years of service. Yes, sorry, sorry. Hey, I don't think you're aware. Vienna, Paris, and Dow Madrid. Each time I have been passed over. In fact, my official career during the past years has been dogged by injustice. Come now, Mr. Bland. The consular service is selective. It has to be. But never, I think, unjust. Sergeant, my Christian. Hello, Nicholas. You appointed him a bit ten years my junior. He lacks my experience, my scholarship, my social assets. He's a very good man with an excellent job. I suppose your father will be long now. Stamps. I've got some rather interesting ones here. How about these? Haven't got that one. Or that. Or that. I've got that one. I collected the whole set when Father was in France. Of course. Well, keep it as a swap. Thank you. It's rather a fine watch you've got there. It's new. My mother sent it to me. It's a beauty. It's got my initials on the back. Lucky boy. I'm sorry, Brand, but there's nothing more to say. Well, Nicholas, I think you're going to enjoy your new home at St. George. There are lots of sandy beaches. You swim? No, sir. My son is delicate. Goodbye, Brand. Goodbye, sir. Bye, Nicholas. Bye, sir. Have run your tummy for a moment. Looking forward to school. I don't think I'm going now. I've decided to take him with me, Holly. I see. You eating well? Yes, thank you. Well, that's all right, Nicky. You're fine. Go and get dressed. You'll find a tin on the sideboard. Help yourself. What is it, Brand? You know the boys perfectly well. I wish to be certain. I went to see the Consul General. I should have listened to you. What happened? No, oh, it was useless. Tenney has been given the appointment. So all that remains is for me to take over the minor post that he has vacated. But you knew all this. You questioned me about my personal affairs. You probed me about my wife. Your private life is part of your job. I have to go through it all again. Explain. Tell him there was no scandal. That my wife left me of her own volition without cause or motive. You told him that? There was no alternative. He... So you still think it was my fault? Brand. I don't expect you to believe this. But this new appointment might be the best thing that could have happened. It's not the job you wanted, but it does mean leaving Madrid. The change can help, if you let it. Try it for your own sake, and for Nicholas. Don't you think I would have tolerated this if it hadn't been for him? You'd have done much better to have sent him to school. No. no school can give him little at his age. Besides, I enjoy the lessons we do together. I wasn't thinking of the lessons. I was thinking of the companionship. Are you questioning my ability to give him that? I meant boys of his own age. You don't understand how much we mean to each other. Perhaps I do, but don't expect too much from him. Ready, Nicholas? When are you off? Oh, we leave at 10 on Thursday. Well, enjoy yourselves. We'll do our best. Thank you, Nicholas. Down now. Mr. Brand, welcome to St. George. I'm Robert Burton. How do you do? This is my son, Nicholas. Mr. Burton. Pleased to meet you, Nicholas. Pleased to meet you, too. I'll get the luggage, sir. One doesn't say, pleased to meet you, Nicholas. This is Garcia Moreno, sir. 
You'll find three heavy cases in the luggage compartment. They're clearly labelled. I engaged him as chauffeur valet, and his wife as cook. Mr. Tenney take his servants with him? Oh, yes, sir. The main trade is cork and olive oil. Keeps us busy. Mr. Tenney used to say, we don't get much money, but we do see life. <laughs> Mr. Tenney must have had an original turn of mind. <laughs> Bring the luggage, senor. The residence? Yes, please, Garcia. out of repair. Oh, and there's no electricity. Mr. Tenney always felt... Shall it. we forget about Mr. Tenney just for a moment, Mr. Burton? I'm sorry, sir. Father, may I go and explore? Very well, Nicholas. Only be careful. I take it my predecessor didn't employ a gardener. No, sir, but Mrs. Tenney used to do a bit. Now and then. That will be all, Garcia. Cattell Magdalena and I will see her later. I wish to discuss my son's diet. Yes, sir. Nicholas? Yes, Father? Time for bed. a little lighthouse and to guide the ships into the harbor at San Joel. Ah, any teeth? No, Father. Ah. Tonic first. Do I have to take it? It's for your own good, Nicholas. I think it's the nicest house we've ever had. And the nicest garden, too. I must say I find myself pleased with it. But we must do something about the garden. I like it as it is. It makes it more exciting to play in. We'll keep one part of it wild for you, Nicholas. I pass. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please, God, bless and take care of Father and of me, and look after us. And please, God, take care of Mummy. For Jesus Christ's sake, Amen.
Excuse me. Where's my father? Your father left you in my care. He says you're to rest after your journey. If you go back to your room, I'll bring your breakfast in. Thank you. Robinson Crusoe. To my darling Richard. Give it to me. On his eighth birthday, with love from Mummy. Where is your mother? In Scotland. Oh, wonderful country. Why not here? He doesn't live with us anymore. Ring if you require anything. It's certainly loud enough. Servants are always supposed to be deaf, of course. If you don't get a move on, Bobby, you're going to be late. You're as bad as he is. Oh. Be back at two o'clock, precisely. Hmm. I have a surprise for you, Mr. Harrington Brand. I propose to be at least one minute late. It's only his first day. Give him time to relax. But he won't relax. He's a stuffed shirt. He's bent double with the chips on his shoulder. I suppose that's why he's here and not somewhere more important. Then we should be nice to him. Hmm. See you later. Bye. Hello, Maria. Carol, don't forget to ask Maria about her boyfriend. I won't. Hello, Maria. Signora. Maria, you've done it beautifully. <laughs> you know, you'd make a fortune in London. Thank you, Simone. By the way, the new consul wants a gardener up at the Casa Blazer. We wondered if perhaps Jose... Yes, Signora. He's not working now, is he? No, Signora. And he's worked as a gardener before. Indeed, Signora. He's a very good gardener. We'll ask him to be up at the Casa Blazer at six o'clock this evening. Mr. Brand will see him when he gets back from the concert. Thank you, Signora. Thank you for thinking of him. What is your name? Jose. Jose Santero, senor. And you are an expert gardener. I can dig and hoe, care for the soil, prune and plant. But I'm not so expert. I understood you had experience. For three years, I worked in the Montero vineyards. But there's little work in the hills now. Have you references? Please? A letter from an employer to testify to your work. Ah. <laughs> we don't bother about such things here, senor, but... But if you care to ask Diego Porgano of Montero, I think you'll speak well of me. I shall expect you to work hard, you know. The pay is 250% as a week. Do you agree? I don't quarrel, senor. Very good. Be here at 8 in the morning. Thank you. I'm afraid not, Nicholas. It won't take very long. I know, but I've got my work to do. Remind me about it at the weekend. Now, you run along and play, and I'll read you later when you're in bed. Well? I start tomorrow. 
I knew you'd get it. How? The senor could see at once that you were a good gardener. He'd have no doubt at all. <laughs> Not everyone thinks as you do. Well, you got the job, didn't you? What did he say? What's he like? Tall. Deep lines. <laughs> he spoke little. But you liked him. I think he may be difficult to please. But the pay is good. Better than I hoped. Enough for us to save? If we try. On Napoleon. Huh. You must be very clever. I only wrote a page. Well, anyone that writes a page on Napoleon must be very clever. Why don't you sit in the sunshine? I have to keep out of the sun. Have you finished your work? Yes. Would you like to come help me for a little? Yes, please. Why not take your jacket off? Just for a while, eh? There. Now then, do this. <laughs> we'll do some digging. A little at first, eh? What's your name? Nicholas. Mine's her same. your shirt? And why are you not wearing a hat? I don't need them. Indeed you do. You must put them on at once or else you must come in. May I stay now? Well, not too long. I don't want you to get tired. I won't. They've arrived at last. That's excellent. Sir, I'm thankful, Senor. Thank you, Garcia. That's something that I shall very much enjoy doing myself. All my personal treasures are in these boxes. My pictures, books, manuscripts, my china. I've missed them. You ask my son to come in. I wish to speak to him. Yes, Senor.
father. Gus says he's the Look, best... Look, Nicholas, they've arrived at last. All our friends. Isn't it nice to see them again? Yes, but Gus just says I've got to come in. But don't you want to help? I've got to finish what I'm doing. I have to water the plants. Have to? <laughs> I employ gardener to work in the garden. Yes, but it's my job. Pussy gave it to me. Yes, but, yes, but, what's happened to your vocabulary? Is it possible you prefer working in the garden to helping me? Couldn't I help you later, Father? The seedlings will die if I don't water them. Oh, very well, Nicholas. I had been looking forward to doing this together, but it doesn't matter. I can manage by myself. I won't be long. Cassia. Senor. Is my son in the habit of working in the garden? Oh, indeed. Every day, senor. As soon as he's finished his lessons. He seems to have become very friendly with the gardener. Friendly? Oh, yes. They're, they're continually together, senor. Indeed. Walter? Yes. It's a kind of game we play here. All the towns in the Costa Brava are in the league. Galda, they're the champions, are meeting San George today. Well, you're a very knowledgeable young man. Where does this game take place? At the front door, and it's at four o'clock. Do let's go. Well, you go and have your rest now. And we'll see. All right. Thank you, Father. And that one's a Perea di Roboti. Do you understand the game? Yes.
except that I have a splitting headache. Father. Nicholas. Came to say goodnight. But you know I always come to say goodnight to you. I thought you were angry with me. Even if I were, Nicholas, I wouldn't neglect you. You know that. You were angry, Father. Not angry, Nicholas. Disappointed. Is it because you didn't like the game? It wasn't the game you took me to see, was it? That was a pretense. It was deceitful. I wanted it to be a surprise for you. I thought you'd be proud of him. Whatever you thought, Nicholas, doesn't alter the fact that you were deceitful. I'm sorry, Father. I didn't mean to be. Nicholas. You and I are alone now, since your mother left us. There are times when it isn't easy. But I've never wavered in my devotion to your care. I ask little in return, Nicholas. But the knowledge of your love. I do love you. I do. Do you? This afternoon, I wondered. It hurt me deeply that my son could be so thoughtless of my feelings. I never want to hurt you. I know you don't. In future, we must be more careful not to hurt each other. Yes, Father. I will. This is quite like old times. We used to come here often when the tent... The garden is looking wonderful, sir. That's because of horses. Oh, of course. Do you know he's the pelota champion here? He's quite a person in St. George. Indeed. It's, it's never struck me before, Mrs. Burton, but St. George must be a very dull place for a woman. Dull? Oh, no, it isn't. There are lots of things to do. Sailing and swimming. And the local movies. We've started a club for the local children. Ping pong and that sort of thing. I make ice cream. I try to teach them cricket. <laughs> We wondered if perhaps Nicholas might like to come along. Uh, I'm afraid my son is delicate. It rather rules that out. What a pity. The Tenney children did. You know, they used to run wild up here. I keep expecting one of them to jump out from behind one of the bushes. Uh, could you get me another sandwich, please, Nicholas? Pardon, senor, but I bring you a small gift. What a lovely present. Where did you catch them, Jose? In the place you told me about? The mill pond? No, Nico, the deep water, higher up. Nico? It's my name for him, senor. I think you'll enjoy them. I'm sorry, I never eat freshwater fish, and they're too rich for my son. Father! Thank you, no. Perhaps you'll care to have them. No. But, Father, Jose wants us to have them. I'm sorry you don't care for them, Senor. With your permission, Senor, I'll take them home. As you please. He got up in the dark and walked miles to get them. Never mind, Jose. Have them for your supper.
don't forgive me, sir. I don't think that was very kind. I know it isn't my place, but... No, it isn't, is it, Mrs. Burton? Carol, I think we'd better be going. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Brand. Goodbye, Mrs. Burton. Goodbye, Burton. Good of you to have come. Nicholas, your behavior at tea yesterday was disgraceful. I've decided that you're spending too much of your time with the gardener. It's obviously having a very bad effect on him. Besides, he's interfering with your work. But he isn't. I consider that he is. I'd even thought of dismissing him. I think that would be cruel, Father. Cruel? To whom? To Horsey. He would think he wasn't a good gardener. If he's to stay, you must give me your word that you won't talk to him. Not talk? But that's silly, Father. Can't I even say good morning? You are not to exchange any words with him at all. If one makes a rule, one must abide by it. Goodbye, Nicholas. Senor? I wish to speak to you. There is to be no more conversation between you and Nicholas. I forbid you to talk to him. God gave me a tongue, Senor. Do you prohibit me from using it? As far as my son is concerned, yes. And under no circumstances are you to set him to work. You'll be making him dig and hoe and hack down bushes. I did it to make him strong. That is an impertinence. I'm sorry. But you can see for yourself. Already he looks well and strong. He likes being with me. I forbid you to talk to him. If you do so, I shall dismiss you at once. And another matter, that rockery, I wish to have it cleared away. Completely cleared. Proud of your strength, aren't you? See that you make a good job of it. San George, two seven. Yes, Senor. 
Garcia, I have to go to Madrid. Tonight, Senor Duque. Uh, yes. Uh, is that you, Mrs. Burton? Mr. Harrington Brand. May I speak to your husband? Thank you. Yes, there's plenty of time to catch the late train. I shall want you to drive me to the station. And how long will you be away, Senor Duque? Oh, three or four days, but I shall let you know before I return. Then I shall pack for you immediately, Senor Duque. Uh, hello, Burton. I've just had an urgent letter from Madrid. They need me there at once. Yes, by the train tonight. No, they wish me to take over. The consulship. Thank you, Burton. No, there's nothing you can do. I shall leave him here. I have every confidence in Garcia. Morning, Nicholas. Magdalena. Come now. Here's your breakfast. Thank you. Did Father catch his train last night? Yes. Yes, I'm sure he did. I didn't hear the car come back. No, Garcia didn't return last night. He's gone away. Gone away? To Girona. He has friends there. They have business together. My father said Garcia... It is very important that he should go. But there's no need for you to say anything about it. How long is he away for? Two days, I think. Nicholas, you're pleased that he's gone away. That's not very nice of you. Anyway, we shall manage very well together. Now, what would you like for your lunch? Anything. Anything you like. I'll prepare you something special. Thank you. Good of you to come so soon. I didn't expect you till Monday. I hurried to Madrid naturally as soon as I heard from you. I'm very grateful to you, but I didn't mean to break into your weekend. Please sit down. Very sad about Tenny, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I'm afraid he's a pretty sick man. Well, now, I know that San George doesn't exactly overtax your abilities. That's an understatement, sir. So I wanted to know if you'd help us out. We're unusually busy now. And as Herbert Meyer isn't available for a few weeks... Meyer? You knew he'd been appointed. No, sir. But the letter... Made no reference to Meyer. Stated that Tenny was sick. And that you wished to see me at once. I'm terribly sorry about this, Brand. I should have written to you myself. I hope you'll accept my apologies. I'm to infer that you intend using me as a stopgap? I wouldn't have put it like that. This is monstrous. Monstrous? What do you mean, monstrous? There's been an unfortunate misunderstanding for which I've been... But it is so blatantly unjust. Mr. Brand, in a previous conversation, we discussed your position in the service. At that time, I left many things unsaid. Indeed, sir? You must understand that your academic qualifications have never been questioned. That would be difficult. They're higher than most in the service. It's as a man that you failed. Do you consider yourself the ultimate judge, sir? I am, as far as the service is concerned. And if that is your only answer, I must ask you to excuse me from deputizing in Madrid. I ought to report this, but I won't. Very well, Brand, go back to St. George. But for heaven's sake, try to behave like a human being. <laughs>
Nick, I'm going to speak to you. Because not to speak would be childish and dangerous. We're going to the river and it's necessary that I tell you what to do. But you needn't talk to me. I'd like to speak to you, Hussie. Good. And we'll be like men and not like children. Here? <laughs> Only the frogs. I found this place years ago. I was about your age. I often come here fishing. Him in the shade and bring me the bait. Nico! Wait to see how good it tastes. You remember catching your first fish? Oh, indeed I do. Something you never forget. I took it home to my mother. Was she pleased? Yes. She was very proud. She wanted to keep it forever. Forever? Who? <laughs> Did she? No, she fried it for my breakfast. My mother do the same. Only... Only what? Nothing, really. Your mother lives in England, doesn't she, Nicola? In Scotland. Sometimes she goes away. She writes to me from wherever she goes. Long letters. Will she come to see you here? No. Father says she won't ever be coming here. Why not? He says it was wrong of her to go away. But I'm sure she would never do anything wrong. No, I'm sure. Father says I'm the only one he needs now. You know, Nico, when your father said we mustn't talk to each other, I was very angry. I was angry, too. Well, we were both wrong. I think perhaps it's because he's not happy and thinks you don't love him enough. But I do love him. I know you do. This is your first trout, Nico. It'll taste different from anything else. You'll remember it all your life. Try it. Ow! It's hot! <laughs> Give me a rod. Will you take me again soon, Hussey? Well, I hope so. I'll catch even more fish next time. <laughs> good. Well, good night, Nicky. Sleep well. See you tomorrow, Hussey. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm back. 
Come here. Oh, where have you been? Go on. In you go. What have you been doing, eh? I told you we'd gone fishing. It's no business fish. of yours. Fishing? <laughs> Where's the fish? Hmm? <laughs> There's a fisherman for you. Not clean. Not prepared. Not prepared for the master's table. Stop it! Those are my fish. I caught them. You caught them. Would you like me to cut your head off too? Gosh, you fool! Leave it. <laughs> What's the matter? What's happened? Hmm? It was Garcia. He had a knife. He cut the heads off my face. But you have to clean them before you can eat them. It wasn't that. He lifted it up and said he'd cut my head off. Cut your head off now, Nick. It's true, Jose. He won't have a hand run away if all the men tried to break down the door. What door? Where? Oh, my bedroom. I waited till he'd gone, then I ran and ran. Nico, you must stop crying. <laughs> There's no need to be frightened anymore. We'll go back to the house together, hmm? Don't send me back, Jose. Please don't send me back. You'll kill me if you do. I won't kill you. That's silly. He's drunk, perhaps. He will. He will. Nicole. I'll stop it. Nico. <laughs> All right. I won't take you back. We'll go to my house, to my mother. Hmm? Will that do? And when you feel better, we can talk about it. There. Better? Come on, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh -huh. black, green, king. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, jack, nine, two, three, four, five, six. You can you can <laughs> You've got to take him back. Seven, I'm not taking him back three, tonight. Two, one, get... You can't two, keep him here. Three, what about his four, father? What five, will he say? Six, I don't know, Maria. Seven, we'll know that three, tomorrow. One, but tonight, Nico stays here. But you say, what about us? You've been in trouble with him before. This time you'll lose your job. Don't worry about us for a while. If I lose my job, I'll get another one, that's all. I've done so much to help him. I've won! I've won! <laughs> I'll take him back early tomorrow, Jose. Yes, I will. 
And I'll talk to his father. Well, be careful what you say for your own sake. Don't worry. Where is it, Senor? Well, sir, where is my son? Your son, Senor? His bed's not been slept in. Where is he? But I took him to his room myself, Senor. I shut the door. But he's not there, I tell you. Well, he came home late last night, Senor. I, I... Just a moment. Uh, forgive me, Senor. I should have told you. You, you see, yesterday... I... That's all, Gus. Nicker. Yes, Horsey? When your father comes back, I'll ask to speak to him. And if you want me, I'll be nearby. I'm all right. I'm not afraid now. Good. Off you go. Nicholas? Father, I thought... Why are you not wearing your shirt? And where have you been? With Horsey. You spent the night in his house? Will you please explain why you took advantage of my absence? I ran away. Garcia frightened me. He was going to kill me. What are you talking about? He was drunk, Father. Drunk? Yes, Hossie said so. Rubbish. Now let's have the truth. It is true. I don't like defiance. But, Father, you shouldn't say I'm not telling the truth when I am. But where does this new boldness come from? And what has happened that you disobey me? But, Father... But what? I meant to tell you. I thought you... You thought? Perhaps you gave some thought to your disobedience. You gave me your word that you wouldn't speak to that man. I didn't to start with. Then it seemed very childish. There was no reason why we shouldn't talk together. Those his words or yours? Mine, Father. Hmm. It's pleasing for your father to see to what a degree that friendship has sprung up between you and this illiterate lout. You don't know him. I know him better than you think. The servant who ingratiates himself, who lies about other servants. He doesn't lie. It's Garcia that lies. He's not good like Jose. And who are you to say what's good or bad? But Garcia had a knife. He cut the heads off my fish. The blood ran all down the table. You're out of your wits. What fish? The fish that I caught. So you went fishing? Yes. With that oaf? With Jose. He taught me how to fish. So. He taught you how to defy and disobey your father. Go away from me. Go to your room. Why do you want to see him? You know why I want to see him. It's about the boy. <coughs> Senor. What is it? The gardener wishes to speak with you, Senor. Get out. I want to make a personal call to a Dr. Harvey H. A. Uh... Good evening. 
Good evening, senor. The consul is expecting us. No? Yes, he is. Ah, well. Thank God you come. Would you mind getting my bag, please? Certainly, senor. Well, my dear fellow, what's the matter? It's Nicholas, Harvey. Nicholas, is he ill? No, not that, but if ever I needed your help, it's now. I got back from Madrid. Shall I serve dinner, senor? Um, we'll have it later, shall we? I'd like a drink and you can tell me all about it. I've thought of all these things for a long time. The flowers that weren't to be picked. The fish I brought him. <laughs> the rocks I had to move. <laughs> for no reason. It's difficult to understand. Mm. He thinks I'm trying to take the child away from him. This is madness. He admits he was wrong to take Nicky fishing. But to look after the boy when he was obviously frightened was an act of simple kindness. Senor? What is it? Excuse me, senor. Will you require anything else tonight? Thank you, Garcia. No. I don't believe that Nicholas was frightened. This pack of lies about Garcia, the words were put into his mouth. No, there's no doubt that he was frightened. Without much cause, I think, but there it is. The gardener says he tried to see you to explain. Couldn't trust myself to speak to him. The man who's poisoned my son made him disobedient and dishonest. But you'll have to. I never wish to see the man again. After he's gone, perhaps I'll regain my son's affection. If you send him away, you'll lose Nicky's love altogether. But he must be punished. Why? Because Nicky enjoys his company? Or because you're jealous? Jealous? <laughs> what other reason is there for you to deny Nicky this perfectly ordinary friendship? He'd have gained from it if you'd let him. I don't believe it. It's true. I warned you. I asked you to let him see his mother. I begged you to send him to school, but you wouldn't listen. Your love for Nicky was too selfish and demanding. No! Be honest with yourself for once. You know it's true. Thank you, Harvey, for your advice. I can't pretend I find it easy to accept it. Nor do I believe that everything you say is true, but... I do promise that I will do nothing until I've considered all you've said. Forgive me, you must be tired. Dr. Harvey asked me to say goodbye to you. He left early. I heard his car go. I thought I'd talk to Mr. Burton today. About his boys' club. Yes, Father. We might go there one evening. Would you like that? What about you, Father? You don't like games. I played cricket for my college, Nicholas. Did you, Father? Oh, I shall have to go now. I can't find my watch, Father. Never mind. I'll help you to look for it this evening.
I'll search it. <laughs> I prefer, senor, you do it. You sent for me, Sir Neil? Where did you get this? And what have you done with the other things that you've stolen? I don't understand, Sir Neil. That's your son's watch. And perhaps you can explain how it came to be in your pocket. It's not possible. I found it myself. In the presence of a witness. If indeed it was in my pocket, it must have been put there by someone else. Put there? By someone else. Very convincing answer. Not the answer you require, perhaps. Don't be impertinent. I demand an explanation or I shall call the police. You don't want an explanation. And you'll call the police, whatever I say. I have never stolen in my life and I did not steal that watch. If your friend the Englishman were here, he'd believe me. How dare you? How dare you question my integrity, you insufferable, you clumsy fool. You wormed your way into my son's affections in order to steal from him. You'll pay for this. Come no closer, senor. I've no wish to harm you, but you've said enough. I don't know what evil there is in your mind, but I pity your son. I shall return to my work. You must do as you please. Sam George 4-9. All right, Senior Brand will see you. The matter is out of my hands. Why don't you go to the police? The police won't listen to us, Senor. He must suffer the consequences of his own act. His own act? That's what we don't understand, Senor. Then his dishonesty must grieve you. I'm sorry. He's never done a dishonest thing in his life. There's no one in this town who would doubt his goodness. Perhaps, until now. He's stolen many valuable things. Even my son's watch. Though he pretended affection for him. Father! Horsey would never steal my watch. Go to your room. Maria, where is Horsey? He's in prison, my child. They say he stole from this house. Who says so? Whoever says so is a liar. Go to your room. He's right. He speaks the truth. Do as I say, Nicholas. I'm sorry, but I don't wish to discuss the matter any further. Senor. Even if you believe he has done it, can't you find it in your heart to forgive him? It would be an act of charity, senor. By the laws of any country, a thief goes to jail. Who am I to interfere? You were foolish to come here. You are hard and cruel. Your eyes don't see the tears of others, and your heart doesn't feel. The little boy knows who's good and who's bad, because he sees and feels. He understands already what kind of man you are. I must ask you to excuse me. They're taking him to the court tomorrow. You in your high position, senor. Couldn't you, perhaps?
senor. Where have you been? I, senor, in the town. Did you take the car? It was necessary. Madalena required some things for the house. And why are you so late? Well, I have some friends there. I stayed with them for a little. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you. Madalena was here. You've been drinking? Senor? Have you been drinking? Well, I'm only human, senor. The affair of the gardener has troubled me very much. I ask your pardon. Very well. Will you excuse me now? One moment, listen. It will be necessary for you to go to Barcelona tomorrow. They're taking the gardener to the court. You'll be required as a witness. I, senor. Yes, you'll come with me. Yes. You know, one other thing. You'll need your references and identity papers. That's all. What are you doing, Nicholas? Nothing. I have to go to Barcelona. I'll be back this evening. Is it about Horsey? Yes. Don't go, Father. Why do you say that? He'll have a better chance if you aren't there. Do you believe that I would be unjust? Horsey couldn't steal. If he's innocent, he'll get a chance to prove it at the court. It won't be for me to say. You want them to send him to prison? Nicholas. You know that to be untrue. You could stop him if you wanted to. If he's a thief, he must be punished. You hate him. Nicholas, you don't know what you're saying. If you hurt him, it'll be your fault. Are those things necessary? If you require me, senor, I shall be in the next carriage. Thank you, guys.
Pedro. Hmm. Pedro. Yeah. It's me, Nico. Did you see Jose before he left? Yes, I saw him this morning, Nico. Did he send me any message? Let me see now. What was it? Oh, it's something about a donkey. Was he frightened? No, he wasn't afraid, Nico. Isn't there anything we can do? No, Nico, nothing. But you're his friend, so I can tell you this. Before now, men have escaped to the hills. There are places where they can hide. Jose knows them well. I went to the Arango with Jose. That's in the hills, isn't it? Yes. Now you must go home and forget this. We know. After we got your message, we came right up here. The house was ransacked. They'd taken everything of value and gone off in your but, car. But, but, Nicholas. We searched everywhere. The house was empty. 
Bob went immediately to the police. I waited. It's Garcia. Here. Garcia's taken him. No, they've called Garcia outside Barcelona. Nicholas wasn't with him. Magdalena says he ran away. Ran away? Yes, as soon as you'd left. From me? They're doing everything they can, but it isn't easy. They don't know where to look. There's one place you could have gone. It's possible. Where? The Calle Corriente. Jose's house. Yes, he went there before. But I don't think that... Look, would you like me to go? You can wait here. No, Mrs. Bedman. Have you seen my son? Your son, senor? What about Jose? What have you done to him? We know nothing, senor. Except that he must hate you as we do. It is better that you go away. Jose is innocent. It was Garcia. I will do everything possible to make amends. You say that Jose's innocence is proved? Yes. So the charge against him is withdrawn. He'll be free. Senor, he was here. Your son was here. What did he say? What did you tell him? Uh, that Jose might go to the hills. That he might escape. But where? Where would he go? I, I don't know, senor. He once went to fish at a, at a mill above Santa Cristina. How do I get there? Nico. Nico. You're hurt. 
Why are you here? What happened? It's Pedro, and you have come here. You came, came by yourself? Through the storm? It's very brave of you, Nico. What's the matter with your arm, Jose? Is it broken? Yes, I think so. It's my father. It's all his fault that this has happened. But your father... I don't care about my father. I hate him. <laughs> About tomorrow. Yes. I have to go back. Go back? Come here, nigga. Listen. What you've done for me is true friendship, and I shall always remember it. But when your father finds out that you've gone, he'll be very unhappy. I don't care if he is. I want to stay with you. You can't stay with me for always, Nico. You don't want me. That's not what I mean. Then why are you sending me away? It's not so simple. To me, your father has shown Injustice. But he loves you. I don't want to love. I hate him. I hate him. It's bad to give hate for love, Nico. What has happened between your father and me is our affair. It's something between grown ups. He meant you no harm. But the things he's done to you. We must forgive those things. I understand now what I've done. Don't believe him. It's a trick. I know now you're innocent. Everyone knows. Forgive me, Jose. Forgive me. Don't believe him. Forgive me. No, no. You must believe him, Nico. Hold this, will you? Put it under his arm. Here, Father? Here. I must be playing for Lota again. Tell me, Nico, where's this place you're going to? It's Stockholm. That's in Sweden. And you'll be going to school? Yes, in England. Good. In the holidays, I shall see my mother again. Then you'll be happy, hmm? Yes, sir, <laughs> I quite understand. But the question of the shipping permit, shall I take that up with the trip?
Pois é. Yes, senor. Before leaving, I wish to thank you, Jose. And to say how sorry I am for what has happened. Senor, it's over now. He's happy. And soon he'll forget. He won't forget you. Nor shall I. Goodbye, Jose. Come to the station, Jose. No, Nico. I must stay here in the garden. I've been away a long time. There's much to do. Goodbye, Nico. Goodbye, Jose. Come on.